Morning everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm in Wisconsin, United States of America, and we're doing a farm tour today. And I'm gonna introduce you guys to the farmer. This is Patty, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> and we're here also with Jeff from De Laval. And he's, he's gonna be uh, showing us this farm too, because they have a pretty cool new milking parlor here, so. We're in Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and we milk just over 500 cows. We crop about um, 1,100 acres of land, and for cropping, we um, raise alfalfa and corn. Um, the corn is for corn silage, alfalfa for haylage. The farm was purchased by my in-laws, Don and Pat Delph, in 1987, and then in 2000, Chet joined the farm, and then in 2002, I joined the farm as well. Um, we set up an LLC in 2003, and we've been growing since 2003. Awesome. Walking into the parlor here. So what what kind of a parlor we got here? So this is a double sixteen P five hundred, uh, which is a GEGI, which that means it's a gang index gang uh, uh, exit. So what uh, we have sixteen cows on the side, and the way that system works is that we can actually individually release gangs of four. We can index gangs of four, or we can actually release the whole side of the time. That gives the farm the ability then to help unload and reload quicker uh, with the options with the different gangs. And it helps uh, if you have different size animals with the GGI function, you can actually index in gangs of four. So if you have one big cow, she won't really dig the whole side of the, uh, of the index. This also is the new automation that D-Lavelle is gonna be featuring here coming up uh, in the fall, which is MA200. So it's brand new automation uh, with, and then if we get down to the basement, we'll see the new MM100 milk meter. Sweet. Yeah, so this is an IDD, which is called, uh, it's a d interactive data display. And really what we're showing here is some cow site data. We don't have any displays at the cow site. So this is an opportunity for the cow manager to look at some basic data without having going back to the computer and seeing what's going on. And maybe Patty can explain what she uses it for on a daily basis. Huh. I, I don't necessarily milk every cow on the farm, but if there is an issue with a cow or something like that, or I just want to check milk weights, I can come over here, check to see who the cow is, and then see like what she's supposed to be milking. Yeah. If you click on one, um, uh, you can see she's given, so far it's given 24 pounds, and then it tells you, well, she's down 17, still milking, uh, but if it was if these flash yellow, that means that they're low milk. You can come and see like how much milk she has given and see how low she is. And if it's within reason, uh, you can let her go. But if it's, if it's something more, then maybe we have to sort her out and work with her. Okay. We talked about MA200. So these are the MA200 cow sign buttons. So it's a real simple one touch button. Um, so the great big square in the middle is our start button, stop button. And then if you have a long push, it'll put it in manual. And there's some different color codes on the outside. These color codes will help the milker understand uh, if things are in a good position or a bad position. So yellow means it'd be a caution if the cow has something going on with it. Um, red might be a stop alarm, like she's do not milk cow. And then if we see uh, if we see white, it means everything's good, she's milking normally. And then right here we're in blue, so that's kind of an idle stage, which so is pending, waiting for somebody to attach to it. And then a very similar looking button is this four square here. This four square here runs our gangs, right? Oh. So we talked about the four individual gangs. So there's one of these that actually every day. And this has the opportunity then to release, index, and lift up our, our uh, divider gates without having to do it as a group. We can do it here as an individual gang. Okay. And then there's one more button down the way a bit. This one. So this is, uh, this is Exit Plus. So Exit Plus, then instead of doing gangs, this plus button will actually release the whole side of the animals oh, okay. and it does it sequentially so it'll actually that one button will open the front ends up wait for a certain amount of time bring the front ends back down 
and then automatically open the entrance gate with one touch. So it supplies the operation of the parlor, right? So the employee doesn't have to open, close, and then do the entrance gate. One button will actually do it all for us. So this P500 is De Laval's newer parallel milking parlor. And it's unique that the sequencing gates will come up while the cows are still standing on the deck there. And then when it's released, those front bars will lift up and let the cows out. And then once all the cows step off of the deck, those sequencing gates swoop down and push all the ladies off the deck. So in the De Laval Champion, you'll get some ladies that are staying there and you gotta chase them off yourself. So this parlor eliminates that by sweeping them all down and off of the deck which is pretty neat. And the other thing Jeff was telling us about, they can open the individual gangs. So there's four gangs in this parlor of four cows to make the double 16. They can release just these front four, leave these ladies in the parlor, release the next four and the back four, whatever they want, they can let the cows go as that section is done being milked. The other thing that allows this parlor to do, which is pretty neat, is individual index this group of four cows. So it's not a straight connected index for all 16. These four are separately indexed and what that means is the cows are pushed back to where the milkers are hanging those milkers, cleaning those teats and performing the milking process. So it's pretty cool. This is definitely an upgrade to the De Laval Champion. It's a slick looking parlor. Hey lady, got a sweetheart here. Good looking cows. The other cool thing about this farm, their return alley is just massive. So cows are never gonna be standing here waiting. Can't wait to be milked. <laughs> The other neat thing in this parlor, they have the Ivanza Milk Claw from De Laval. That's a newer milk claw. To change the liners, there's just, uh, you just screw the liner out and screw the new ones back in, so pretty sweet. They've just simplified the whole interface up here for the milker. There's no screen with a million buttons. They have the one button, you press it. I imagine that's to sort the cow. So that's the parlor. They have a basement then. We're gonna go down right now. So this is a direct load farm, you call it? Yep, so direct load the milk goes uh, from the receiver through a plate heat exchanger and onto the truck at 34 degrees. So what we do then, this is the vat behind you is our milk wash buffer tank. So that buffer tank will essentially proportionally slow down the melt uh, at a very slow rate. We slowly push it through our plate heat exchanger. Half of this is water and half of this is glycol. So the water here is about 52 degrees. So we take our melt that's around 100, we drop it down to about 55. And then we remove the rest of the temperature with the glycol side down to about, today we're at uh, 34. And then we go into the tank, uh, directly then cold. Uh, this tanker here holds about 55,000 pounds of milk. So there's alarm uh, on the metering systems. Once that hits that certain amount of milk, alarm will come on, pull the hose off, the tank's ready to go to the plant. That's cool. 
The other pretty cool thing in their fill room here is they have a piper system. So that's like an automatic milk sampling piece of technology they have since they're loading directly onto the truck. Instead of taking samples at the milk plant, it's actively taking a sample and filling a bag while it's filling that entire load. So this is pretty neat. It also will record the weight that's going on that truck. Then the plant can just go off of that sample and that. We're in their freestyle barn now, and the parlor we were just in is right down there. So I guess this is your main cow highway. Yeah. yeah. Then they got a couple of groups of ladies. <laughs> this barn was built in 1996, and then the barn here was built in 2000. And Chet and Don, they built this side of the barn by themselves wow. with employees. Wow. Yeah. Cleary built that side. We're in the next freestyle barn now, and this is pretty cool. This is their pre-fresh pen. So these ladies are all ready to calve any minute, and they're in a freestall set up here. They're walking through here every 20 minutes, 24 hours a day, looking for these cows that are calving. And once they're about to calve, they have a straw pack right over there, and they'll separate that lady out, put her over there, and she'll have the calf right there. And she was just telling me, they have a routine to um, feed the cows some fresh feed right away and they give it some water with special electrolytes in there and uh, this is all really caring for that cow that just had a calf and they want to give it the best start so they're doing all these um, protocols to get that cow fed and comfy again as quickly as they can after she's done calving so pretty neat program they run here um, I do, I've never seen that the cows are waiting to calve in the freestyle barn, but they're walking through constantly and moving those ladies right to that pack. So pretty neat. So this is their freestyle barn. Older milking and ladies are here. They're bedding with sand and they do not recycle their sand. So they're putting it straight into the manure pit and onto the field, just like we do back at home. Fun fact about these barns, they are insulating the roof, and that is to keep the heat from the sun out of the barn. So this roof right here insulated, not to keep the barn warm in the winter time, but to keep it cool in the summertime. So in this freestyle barn, they have curtains on the side that can open up when it's hot. You can see the massive fans there to move air over top of these ladies. But these are the hand cranks. So there's a cable that goes across the cows to the other side to that wall. And they can raise and lower those curtains right here in the feed alley. So they got four hand cranks. Never noticed that before in a barn, so that's pretty cool. The other thing they have in here too is, of course, the sprinklers. And that's to keep the cows cool in the summertime. That pipe runs across when the ladies are up here eating. They'll get a little spritz of cool water. And then that in combination with the air moving over top keeps these ladies nice and cool in those hot summer months. I can see they're feeding a bunch of corn silage. This is their feed. Oh yeah, the doggies here. <laughs> this is their TMR. Looks good. Pretty wet. Just stepped out of their freestyle barn and they have some sand here so they buy this in it's called washed sand and i am so jealous this is just 
This is straight up beach sand. They truck it in. Apparently sand is quite abundant out here where they're located so they can get as much as they want for a reasonable price. So at this farm they're hauling all their own liquid manure and this is one of their tankers. I think they said they had four but it's just a semi-trailer with a tank and they open a valve at the back, dump it out and then they'll come with a chisel plow and work all that manure into the soil. This is their feed truck. And um, it was going to be dry cows and then peppers. We're starting to depopulate the outside lot there, and now it now it's all gone. But um, so that was like the first step. And um, but then it ended up it never held dry cows ever. It always held peppers. We always had plenty of them. And so this side is the breeding age, and then as they um, get bigger, they just start rotating around um, this half of the barn. So a lot of them in 10-7 are pregnant already, and then 10-8 and 9, for the most part, should be pregnant or they're on their last straw. Yep. yep, and then they'll go to a few times to finish them off. How are you um, spotting heat? Are you just visually, or are you sinking them? No. Or? Every once in a while, I'll sink them. Um, if you see orange on them, that means they were estimated yesterday. Uh, but other natural heats, like a lot of times you can you can see them in heat. They're very vocal, yeah. um, or they're they mess around like mm -hmm. you know, or they follow me and you're like, why are you following me today? <laughs> so. And then to take the heifers out of there that are about to calve, are you just looking for those udders that are um, getting bigger? Or uh, so it's all in dairy comp. We use okay. the management software dairy comp, yep. and so um, three weeks before calving, we take truckloads to the pre fresh uh, okay. or a truckload up. Um, we can get six cows six animals on our trailer um, and so sometimes there's six to go up sometimes there's 12 sometimes there's 18 it all depends on the week so right on. Um, if sometimes we do have a dry lot too so I can put heifers down there so if we're running overflow we have the dry lot too to put the heifers in too awesome so, so this is their heifer barn and they got the young ones here with the little feed rail, and then they go into mini head lockers, and they're just constantly shuffled down as they get older to bigger head lockers and bigger free stalls. You see their mini free stalls there. These are young heifers in training. That's the parlor barn right there and throughout their yard they have calf hutches so these are your standard calf hutch they got a little pen out in front so the calf can walk around it's pretty cool they spread lime on the ground it's a pretty thick layer they put the calf hutch on there after it's been fully disinfected from the previous calf living in it and then they will get rid of the calf when they're done and weaned from milk they'll go to group housing and then once the calf has left you know it's spent the three months here or whatever, they'll scrape all of this material away, put new material down, a disinfected hutch, disinfected fence, buckets, everything's cleaned. And that's how they're achieving a real sterile environment for these calves to start life in. It's super important you keep these calves as uh, healthy as possible. They're just gonna grow that much quicker and become milking cows sooner. So.
So that's the end of the tour. Thank you guys very much for your time and, and showing us your awesome farm. No, no worries. Yeah. Awesome. Hopefully Canadians like it. <laughs> I'm sure they will. <laughs>